So this is essentially after treatment, day one. And let me tell you, it is definitely not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. It was way more intense, even coming from someone who's used ketamine a couple times recreationally in the past, so kind of been in that realm at one point, and used, you know, mushrooms in the past and have tripped pretty hard, but to be in a controlled setting and, whoop, let me try to hold this thing a little bit better. Oh, well, not working. Bear with me. But to be in a controlled kind of setting and have that kind of intensity of an experience was, yeah, pretty, pretty wild. And again, my intention for being there and using this is not to party or to trip or to see visuals, it's to heal. And that's my sole purpose. Ideally, if I could opt to not even hallucinate or see things, I probably would. But unfortunately, that's not how this works with psychedelics, with psilocybin, with ayahuasca, with iboga, and all those kinds of things. You need to be kind of detached from your egoic self to be able to heal and see what's going on. I am thankful that I brought some music in that was really beautiful and blissful and actually had some really, really emotional moments where it was just super pretty, as I said, and wanting to cry and emotional and intense and more intense and, you know, kind of alien-like at times. And you wonder why you're maybe in this place, like, am I making the right choice? What am I doing here? You have all those second guessing kind of things. And I think that's when it's most important to trust the treatment and to trust that the ketamine is doing what it's supposed to be doing. And just hold on to that thought and stay positive because you don't want to have any kind of negative emotions. You want to have, you know, good intentions and good thoughts as much as you can. And yeah, I mean, I was pretty, pretty exhausted. I could barely even stand up for about 15 minutes after the treatment ended. And I am still kind of out of it. And this is what time? 2.04 right now. And my treatment ended at around 11.30. So definitely something you cannot drive home from. That is for sure. And thankfully, my neighbor was kind enough to help me with this. And she was really beautiful. And that was super great. Uh, what can I say? I mean, I saw a lot of colors, almost like, I don't know how to describe it. You really can't describe it. I would just say colors that were kind of shifting, like yellows, and then it would just kind of get more like yellow and black and then sometimes it would just go completely black into like a void of all blackness which I you know kind of a little bit scary but again during the treatment I would say the best thing to do is just keep positive and stay positive and just know that you're in this to heal and that's pretty much everything so even if it gets a little scary or you start thinking about too much which you're going to do, just trust the process and go along for the ride and stay open to it and stay positive throughout everything. Knowing you're safe, knowing, you know, everything's going to be all right. Sorry, I'm like being self-conscious right now <laughs> still because I'm totally out of it. But as I said, this is just kind of an impromptu journaling little video that I think will maybe help out some people, but you know, just so you're aware, the setting was a little sterile. It could have been a little bit better. There was only one person in the clinic, which was a little bit kind of unnerving. I wish there was another person other than one anesthesiologist there, but probably isn't that big of a deal to just watch over one person. But again, for my peace of mind, ideally there was a doctor or someone else there just in case something were to go wrong, it would have given me that additional peace of mind. So 
in theory, no matter what, even if it's a sterile environment, guess what? You're going to pretty much be not there anyway. You're going to be going into the ketamine trip, essentially, and it doesn't really matter. Your eyes are closed. The music was definitely key. It really helped give me a beautiful experience. Even when it was a little tough, I had beautiful music to kind of guide me through. And, you know, as I said, definitely more intense and this was the lowest dose because it was day one that I anticipated. I wasn't really expecting it to be that strong of a trip. And it was pretty intense. So, again, it's not like you're going to go and sign up to do ketamine treatments and just think that it's not going to be a real crazy big journey. Because it is. It's a really big journey. And... Um, a bit nervous still, but at the same time, I'm going to trust the flow and I'm going to give it four treatments. So I'm one in, I got another one on Thursday and then I got two next week and I'm just going to see what happens and, you know, go through the four and evaluate where I'm at. I don't know if I feel good right now. I'm definitely still out of it. I'm going to lay low today. I got one photo shoot in the evening and probably take a nap right now and just be thankful that I'm back home safe with Simon. And again, it's definitely a psychedelic journey. It's not something like getting a vitamin B12 drip or something. I mean, it's you're getting basically zapped in to avoid a blackness and getting kind of slung shot into, you know, this ketamine hole. So it's intense you're out of your body you can't move if you want to and you got to be all right with surrendering control and letting something kind of take over so that's not easy for anyone it's not easy for me either but I was really trying to be mindful about staying open to it as I said and just trusting the fact that I am not using this to party I'm using it as a healing process for my anxiety and my mental well-being so that's it guys this is just a quick little journal note day one after ketamine on my couch and calling it and going to take a nap so see you guys be well